How would you feel if someone kept important information from you for decades? This is not just a hypothetical question, but a reality when it comes to the United States government and its history of hiding secrets from the public. Consider Area 51, a highly classified facility within the Nevada Test and Training Range, long denied by the government. This secrecy has fueled theories about extraterrestrial life and classified military projects. Join us as we reveal the hidden truths that the U.S. government is hiding from you. Stonehenge is a world-renowned prehistoric monument that is situated in the English county of Wiltshire. This famous site is renowned for its massive circular formation comprising around 30 enormous stones. These giant stones are an impressive sight. The largest of them reaches a height of about 4.1 meters and weighs over 25 tons. Historians estimate that Stonehenge was constructed around 5,000 years ago. However, the exact details of who built Stonehenge and the methods they employed remain a mystery. That doesn't happen anywhere else at stone circles in the country. They only come from stone that's quarried. Questions abound regarding the ancient builder's ability to not only transport these massive stones, but also to lift several of them to a height of at least three meters to create the structure we see today. So how could you have moved these into place? How could you have moved them from Wales, where the blue stones, the spotted dolerite, came from within Stonehenge? For many years, scientists and archaeologists have been diligently working to uncover the secrets of Stonehenge. They have developed various theories, but so far, they only have speculative hypotheses. Interestingly, evidence of an old settlement was found a few kilometers away from Stonehenge. This settlement is considered home to the people who constructed Stonehenge. Despite this discovery, the identity of these ancient builders is still a subject of debate among researchers. Some suggest that they might have been ancient Romans or perhaps Druids, but there is no definitive evidence to confirm these theories. It is widely speculated that Stonehenge was used for religious or ceremonial purposes. The discovery of Human supports this belief remains at the site, suggesting that it may have served as a sacred city or altar in ancient times. However, the exact nature of the rituals performed and the monument's significance to its creators are yet to be fully understood. The mystery of Stonehenge continues to fascinate both experts and the general public alike as they seek to unravel the history and purpose of this ancient, monumental structure. Many scientists today believe that the huge stones used to build Stonehenge were moved from a far-off quarry. They think that the people back then might have used animals to pull the stones and placed them on logs, which they then rolled across the land. This method would have allowed the local inhabitants to slowly but surely create the structure of Stonehenge, a process that could have taken over a thousand years to complete. This theory suggests that with a lot of effort and many hands, the ancient builders were able to transport and erect these massive stones using simple yet effective tools and methods available at the time. Dive deeper into the intriguing world of the Beale ciphers, where hidden treasure and unsolved codes await our discovery. The Beale ciphers consist of three mysterious coded messages that supposedly point to the whereabouts of a vast hidden treasure. These intriguing messages came to public attention through a pamphlet distributed by James Beverly Ward. The true writer of the original document chose to stay anonymous. However, the pamphlet's story narrates that in 1820, the proprietor of the Washington Hotel in Lynchburg, Virginia, a man named Robert Morris, encountered a bison hunter by the name of Thomas Jefferson Beale. The two struck up a friendship, and Beale became a regular visitor at Morris's establishment. Beale was known to leave for unknown errands and then return to the hotel for periods of rest and recovery. His final visit to Morris occurred in 1822, after which he entrusted Morris with a securely locked iron box. This box, according to Beale, contained papers of significant and confidential nature. Beale made Morris promise to safeguard the box, stating that he would return for it within two years. Morris held on to the box, waiting for Beale's return, trusting in Beale's word. Ten years had passed, and by 1832, Morris faced the reality that Beale might never come back. Yet, he couldn't bring himself to open the box until 1845, 
a full 23 years after Beale's last departure. When Morris finally opened the box, he found it contained three pieces of paper, each filled with a series of enigmatic numbers. Recalling Beale's tales of hidden treasures near Buford, Morris deduced that these coded messages were likely directions to the concealed wealth. The discovery sparked a wave of intrigue and curiosity, leading many to attempt to decipher the messages in hopes of finding the treasure. Yet, despite the efforts of numerous codebreakers and treasure hunters, the Beale ciphers remain unsolved, continuing to fuel speculation and the allure of undiscovered riches. Many people have repeatedly tried to crack the codes known as the Beale ciphers. After a lot of hard work, they found that one of the ciphers could be decoded using the text from the Declaration of Independence as a key. This breakthrough was a big deal because it revealed that Beale claimed to have hidden a treasure with a current value of around $30 million. However, this discovery only solved part of the mystery. The actual location of this massive treasure remains a secret, hidden within another one of the ciphers. Unfortunately, no one has yet figured out how to decode this second cipher, leaving the exact whereabouts of the treasure unknown. Step into the enigmatic Bermuda Triangle, a mysterious place where ships and planes have vanished without a trace. The Bermuda Triangle, often called the Devil's Triangle, is one of the world's most intriguing and mysterious regions. This area is famous for its unexplained events, where many ships, airplanes, and their crews and passengers have vanished without a trace. The reasons behind these mysterious disappearances remain a puzzle, sparking curiosity and numerous theories. Geographically, the Bermuda Triangle is situated in the western part of the North Atlantic Ocean, lying within the Sargasso Sea. This triangular area is bounded by three points, Miami in the United States, Bermuda and San Juan in Puerto Rico. Covering a vast area of about 700,000 square kilometers, the Bermuda Triangle is a point of interest for researchers and storytellers and a busy corridor for vessels and aircraft. Everyone knows about the Bermuda Triangle, but yet nobody knows what's going on over there. The region serves as a significant passage for ships traveling from the Caribbean Sea to Europe and for flights from the United States East Coast heading towards South America. While it's true that the Bermuda Triangle is notorious for its shipwrecks and aviation accidents, it's important to note that such incidents are not exclusive to this area. However, the frequency and the unexplained nature of these events in the Bermuda Triangle are what captures the public's imagination. The Bermuda Triangle has long been the center of many conspiracy theories, with some suggesting that it harbors extraordinary secrets. One popular theory among conspiracy enthusiasts is that the region once housed the legendary city of Atlantis, which, according to legend, disappeared under mysterious circumstances. Adding an even more fantastical twist, some speculate that extraterrestrial forces were involved in Atlantis's downfall and that the same alien influences are responsible for the strange occurrences within the Bermuda Triangle today. Despite such theories, scientific communities typically dismiss these ideas. Researchers and scientists argue that the reasons behind the numerous disappearances and accidents within the Bermuda Triangle can be attributed to more mundane, natural causes. Travel back to ancient Egypt to uncover the life of Cleopatra, a queen whose intelligence and power changed the world. Cleopatra is a famous figure, often remembered as one of the queens of Egypt. She was very smart, well-educated, and full of life, and many people still talk about her life story today. Cleopatra was born in the year 69 BC in a place called Alexandria. She was part of the Ptolemaic dynasty, which was started by Ptolemy Ber Soter, who was one of Alexander the Great's generals. This means that, interestingly, she was not originally from Egypt by blood. However, Cleopatra worked hard to embrace the culture and traditions of the Egyptian people she ruled. She was the very first monarch from her family line to learn and speak the Egyptian language, which was a big deal then. She also dressed like the traditional Egyptian queens, showing her respect and connection to the country's ancient customs. 
Cleopatra had a fascinating impact on many people, especially men. She is famous for her relationships with powerful Roman generals like Julius Caesar and Mark Antony. Her encounter with these men changed history. In particular, her relationship with Mark Antony was not just for show. It was based on genuine feelings and mutual respect between the two. They were very close and shared a deep bond. Even though it's widely thought that Cleopatra chose to end her own life, to escape the fate of becoming a captive to Octavian, the exact place where she is buried remains a mystery. Even the most skilled archaeologists have yet to pinpoint the exact location of Cleopatra's final resting place. This has been a significant challenge in the field of archaeology, as finding her tomb could provide new insights into her life and the end of her reign. In recent times, though, there has been a noteworthy discovery. The Dominican archaeological mission has uncovered a series of important relics dating back to when Cleopatra ruled Egypt. These artifacts were found within the ancient structure known as the Temple of Tapasiris Magna. This finding is crucial as it suggests that significant people from Cleopatra's time were commemorated or buried there. Furthermore, technological advancements have led to exciting new discoveries by these researchers. Through the use of radar survey techniques, experts have been able to map out a complex network beneath the temple's surface. This underground labyrinth includes tunnels and passageways that lead to what appear to be three large concealed chambers. These hidden rooms are still shrouded in mystery, and their contents have yet to be fully explored or understood. Kathleen Martinez, an archaeologist deeply involved in the search, has proposed a thrilling hypothesis based on these findings. She believes that the tombs of Cleopatra and her lover, Mark Antony, could finally be found within these concealed chambers. Unravel the chilling tale of the Sodder family, whose peaceful night turned into a mystery with their sudden disappearance. The mysterious case of the Sodder family, children's disappearance remains one of the most perplexing events in American history after the Second World War. The family, led by George and Jenny Sodder, was quite large, with a total of ten children, and they lived a relatively normal, quiet life in the small town of Fayetteville, West Virginia. But their world turned upside down on a fateful night, Christmas Eve in 1945. On this chilly December night, as the family slept, a devastating fire erupted within their home. Jenny, the mother, was the first to sense danger as she awoke to the alarming scent of smoke filling the air. In a panic, she roused her husband George, and together with a sense of urgency, they rounded up four of their children and fled into the safety of the night. Tragically, they were unable to reach the remaining children due to the fierce and unforgiving flames that had taken over the path to their sleeping quarters. Amidst this chaos, they discovered a terrifying fact. The phone lines, both theirs and those of their neighbors, had been mysteriously cut, making it impossible for them to call for emergency services promptly. Furthermore, in a desperate attempt to rescue his family, George tried to use his truck to get closer to the house or perhaps to climb onto the roof. However, to his dismay, the truck, which had been functioning perfectly the day before, now refused to start. When the fire department finally arrived, Late and unable to prevent the destruction, they searched the ashes of what once was the Sodder family home. Inexplicably, they found no traces of the bodies of the five children who had been trapped inside. This lack of remains led to more questions than answers, deepening the mystery. Adding to the intrigue, there was an unsettling visit to the Sodder home just the day before the fire by an insurance agent. During this visit, a heated exchange occurred between the agent and George Sodder. George, known for his strong opinions, had made negative remarks about the Italian dictator Benito Mussolini. The heated exchange between George Sodder and the insurance agent tasted bitter. The disagreement was intense, and the air was filled with tension. Only a few days after this unsettling confrontation, an unknown individual visited the Sodder family. This stranger pointed out what he claimed was a problem with the house's electrical wiring. However, George Sodder did not heed the stranger's warning, possibly due to skepticism or disbelief. 
The situation took a darker turn after the devastating fire that consumed the Sodder family home. In the aftermath, when authorities were trying to piece together what happened, the investigation concluded that the fire resulted from faulty electrical wiring. Interestingly, the insurance agent who had previously clashed with George was among the experts contributing to this conclusion. This coincidence has raised eyebrows and fueled speculation. Why would the insurance agent, who had just had a falling out with George, be involved in the investigation? And more importantly, how could he objectively assess the situation given their recent dispute? Embark on a search for answers in the puzzling case of a Boeing 747 that disappeared into thin air, leaving no trace behind. The mysterious vanishing of a Malaysia Airlines Boeing 747 has puzzled many and stands as a dark enigma in the annals of recent flight history. On the night of March 8, 2014, precisely at 42 minutes past midnight, this large passenger aircraft set off from the city of Kuala Lumpur, heading towards Beijing. It was carrying a total of 239 souls, comprising 12 individuals working as crew and 227 individuals traveling as passengers. Roughly 40 minutes into its journey, all forms of communication from the pilot halted abruptly. Shortly after this sudden silence, the aircraft vanished from the radar screens, leaving many questions unanswered. What makes this event particularly baffling is that the airplane continued to fly for an additional seven hours after it had vanished from sight. And they moved the sea surface about five centimeters, and the satellite has no problem resolving that. This detail is perplexing. The plane was under the control of two pilots known for their depth of experience. Normally, if they had encountered any technical issues or failures with the plane's systems, there would have been an attempt to redirect the plane back to the starting point in Kuala Lumpur. However, this expected procedure was not followed. The unfolding of events gives rise to speculation that the disappearance may have been intentionally orchestrated to make the plane difficult to locate. A large-scale search and rescue mission was promptly launched six hours following the loss of contact with the flight. This extensive operation covered vast areas, including the South China Sea, the Malacca Strait, and certain sections of the Indian Ocean close to Australia's western shorelines. Despite the urgency and breadth of this search, it ended in disappointment as no significant findings were made. In the years that followed, Specifically during 2015 and 2016, minor pieces of the missing Boeing were found by chance. These fragments were located on the shores and near the islands spread across diverse locations, the islands of Reunion and Rodriguez, as well as the coastal regions of Mozambique and Mossel Bay in South Africa. Each piece added to the puzzle yet offered little in the way of clear answers. The discovery of the aircraft's fragments led to the confirmation that the plane had indeed met with a tragic accident. I think it's enormously important to find the plane because while planes crash routinely, they don't just disappear, and I think this terrifies people. It was clear that the individuals on the airplane, unfortunately, did not survive. However, the exact reasons behind this devastating plane crash continue to be a matter of speculation and uncertainty. One of the theories that gained considerable attention suggests that the plane might have been taken over or hijacked. This act of hijacking could have been possibly carried out by individuals with malicious intent, commonly known as terrorists, or even by the person flying the plane, the pilot named Zaharie Ahmad Shah. This particular theory stems from the fact that a flight simulator was found in the pilot's residence. This simulator had stored on it various flight paths that crossed over the Indian Ocean, paths not typically associated with the pilot's regular duties. Join the legendary journey of Amelia Earhart, whose daring flight across the ocean ended in an enduring mystery. Amelia, Mary Earhart, a pioneering woman in aviation, made history at 31 by becoming the first female aviator to fly solo across the Atlantic Ocean in 1928. Her remarkable achievements did not stop there. By the time she was 40, 
Amelia had become a celebrated figure in the world of aviation, known for her daring and groundbreaking flights. Driven by a passion for adventure and a desire to make one last monumental trip, she planned an ambitious journey, a flight around the world. On May 20, 1937, Amelia Earhart, along with her navigator Fred Noonan, began what was to be a historic flight. They started their trip in a very modern two-engine plane called the Lockheed Electra. Their big goal was to fly all the way around the world, something not many people had tried to do before. Over the following weeks, Amelia and Fred made significant progress. They skillfully flew over vast and diverse landscapes, covering major portions of the globe. Their journey took them across the challenging terrains of the Atlantic Ocean, the vast deserts of Africa, the mysterious lands of Arabia, the vibrant subcontinent of India, and the dense jungles of Southeast Asia. By early July, they had successfully completed about 80% of their planned route, a testament to their skills and determination. However, their adventure took a dramatic turn on July 2nd. The duo took off from Leh, a coastal city in New Guinea, setting their sights on Howland Island, a tiny speck in the vast expanse of the Central Pacific Ocean. This leg of the journey was crucial, as they needed to land on Howland Island to refuel for the next part of their trip. But navigation was incredibly challenging, especially in the era before modern GPS technology. The island was a minuscule target in the immense ocean, making the task daunting even for experienced navigators like Noonan. Despite the difficulties, Amelia and Fred were determined to reach Howland Island. A United States Coast Guard ship was positioned nearby to guide them in for a safe landing. But fate had a different plan. The last transmissions received by the Coast Guard ship painted a grim picture. Earhart reported that they were running low on fuel and could not locate the island. The communication was fraught with tension and urgency. Tragically, after those final messages, nothing more was heard from Amelia Earhart and Fred Noonan. They never arrived at Howland Island. Many efforts were made to locate the crashed plane and any sign of the pilots, but for a long time, these searches turned up empty. Then, in January 2024, a group of deep-sea divers from Deep Sea Vision discovered pieces of wreckage in the Pacific Ocean. These pieces were from Earhart's plane. Yet, sadly, they didn't find any sign of the pilots themselves. There's another idea about what might have happened to the pilots. Some people believe that Earhart and Noonan survived their plane's crash, but were then taken prisoner by Japanese soldiers. This theory is partly based on old photos from Jaluit Atoll, where you can see a man and a woman who look a lot like Earhart and Noonan. Explore the fallen world of the Maya, a brilliant civilization whose sudden disappearance puzzles historians to this day. Throughout the long span of human history, numerous civilizations have emerged across the globe. With their distinct cultures and advancements, these societies have flourished at different times. However, many of these civilizations eventually faded into oblivion. The reasons for their disappearance vary, but conflicts and widespread diseases played significant roles in many instances. Nevertheless, the story of the Maya civilization's decline is notably distinct from the common narratives of other ancient societies. The Maya, a remarkable group of indigenous people, experienced a mysterious decline predating European colonizers' arrival in South America. This region was home to several prominent civilizations, including the Aztecs and the Incas, but the Maya were particularly renowned for their achievements. This civilization succeeded in establishing a vast and influential empire. The Maya people were pioneers in various fields. They developed a unique system of writing, made significant contributions to the arts, delved into the complexities of mathematics, and constructed stunning architectural wonders. These structures continue to captivate people with their majestic beauty and sophistication. The zenith of Maya civilization unfolded between the years 250 and 900 AD. However, by the year 1050, the once thriving major cities of the Maya were found abandoned. This raises a compelling question. What led to the downfall of one of South America's most formidable civilizations? 
Scholars and scientists have proposed multiple theories to explain this enigma. Among these hypotheses, the possibility of a severe drought stands out. Research indicates that around the transition from the 9th to the 10th century, there was a drastic reduction in rainfall, with the annual precipitation levels on the continent plummeting by as much as 70%. This significant climatic change might have contributed to the challenges that ultimately led to the civilization's decline. In our exploration of history, we find that droughts and declines in civilizations often go hand in hand. For instance, around the year 200 AD, a significant city known as Teotihuacan experienced a dramatic drop in its population. This event has led many scientists to believe that a severe drought could have been the cause of its downfall. The pattern observed in Teotihuacan provides a backdrop to the theories surrounding the disappearance of the Maya civilization. The Maya, a complex and diverse group of people, faced their own set of challenges. Unlike a single, unified nation, the Maya civilization comprised various tribes and communities, each with its own leaders and agendas. This lack of unity sometimes led to internal conflicts and skirmishes. It was not uncommon for the leader of one Maya group to launch attacks against another, leading to widespread strife within the civilization. One of the most notable incidents occurred in the early 9th century in Tikal, where archaeological evidence suggests that a significant and violent conflict occurred. This event is often cited as an example of the internal turmoil that plagued the Maya civilization. Delve into the ancient mystery of the astrolabe, an incredible device that unlocked the secrets of the stars and skies. In the early 20th century, specifically in 1902, a group of sponge divers made an intriguing discovery at the depths of the Ionian Sea, near a picturesque Greek island called Antikythera. They stumbled upon what appeared to be a peculiar piece of stone. However, this was no ordinary rock. Buried beneath the sea's surface, it hid secrets of ancient ingenuity. Upon closer inspection, experts began to speculate that this find might be something extraordinary. An ancient mechanism, possibly an astrolabe. This was a spectacular device. It's an analog computer. It doesn't use digital. It uses wheels and gears. This was a device that we wouldn't see again for another 2,000 years until the 1800s. Which is a complex instrument used by ancient navigators and astronomers. This discovery intrigued the academic world, but it wasn't until half a century later that significant advances were made in understanding the artifact. An English historian by the name of Derek J. de Sola Price became particularly fascinated with the so-called Antikythera mechanism. He embarked on a detailed study utilizing X-ray technology, which was quite advanced for his time. This allowed him to peer inside the corroded remains of the device without causing it damage. His examinations led to a groundbreaking realization. The mechanism was not merely a decorative piece, but a sophisticated tool used for astronomical measurements. It functioned as a complex calendar and an instrument for tracking celestial bodies such as the Sun, the Moon, and possibly other planets. This effectively made the Antikythera mechanism an ancient precursor to modern computing devices capable of calculations and celestial observations. The researchers determined that the Antikythera mechanism was originally housed in a compact wooden box. This box contained an intricate assembly of 37 gears, though only 30 of these gears have been found to date. The front and back of the box featured various dials, limbs, concentric rings, and pointers, all meticulously arranged to track celestial time and events. The Antikythera mechanism was equipped with a handle on one side panel, this handle wasn't just for decoration, it was crucial for the functionality of the device. By turning this handle, a user could activate the internal gears and set the entire mechanism into motion. This feature highlights the interactive and user-driven nature of the ancient instrument. The Antikythera mechanism is an old and very clever tool from a long time ago. Its sides were not just plain, they had two uses. One side had a handle to work the mechanism, the other side had something very smart for that time, instructions carved right into it. 
This was like an old-fashioned guide on how to use it. These instructions helped people understand and use its many complex features. The main job of this tool was to watch and guess where stars and planets would be in the sky. People back then could use it to check where planets like Mercury, Mars, Jupiter, Venus, and Saturn were, and even guess where they would be later. This was really helpful for things like farming, religious events, and sailing. The Antikythera mechanism was also amazing because it could guess when lunar and solar eclipses would occur. It could predict up to 42 different space events. This was very important for making calendars and planning special ceremonies long ago. Sail into the legend of Atlantis, a lost island shrouded in mystery and stories of advanced civilization beneath the sea. The question of whether the legendary island of Atlantis was real or merely a myth has been a topic of conversation and debate among scholars, historians, and enthusiasts for centuries. The first known mention of this mysterious island comes from the ancient texts of Greek philosopher Plato. In his famous dialogues, Plato described Atlantis as an island situated in, the Atlantic Ocean, lying just beyond what was known to the ancient Greeks as the Pillars of Hercules, what we today identify as the Strait of Gibraltar, located at the westernmost tip of the Mediterranean Sea, near the coast of what is now modern-day Morocco and Spain. Plato's descriptions place Atlantis directly opposite the Atlas Mountains, anchoring it in what would be the northwestern part of the African continent. This area is close to the geographical marvel known as the Strait of Gibraltar, which is a gateway between the Mediterranean Sea and the Atlantic Ocean. Plato told a story about a place called Atlantis. This story isn't just about Atlantis's location and what happened to it. In the story, a huge natural disaster happened around 9500 BC. A really big earthquake hit Atlantis. It was so strong that it made Atlantis sink into the ocean very quickly, all in one night. After this, Atlantis disappeared under the water, and where there used to be a city, there was only an ocean left. What makes the story of Atlantis especially intriguing is the supposed technological and architectural advancements of its inhabitants. Despite the era being marked by the use of primitive tools and simple ways of living elsewhere on the globe, the Atlanteans were described by Plato as being exceptionally advanced for their time. They were said to have constructed magnificent temples, expansive bridges, and impressive fleets of ships. These feats of engineering and craftsmanship paint a picture of a society that was far ahead of its contemporaries in terms of technology and culture. Plato was deeply impressed by the advanced nature of the Atlantis civilization. He wasn't one to make unfounded claims, so to back up his intriguing stories, he referred to earlier texts by Solon, a respected statesman and poet who had also mentioned Atlantis. This shows that the tale of Atlantis was not a new concept invented by Plato, but was part of a longer tradition of storytelling and historical recording. Over the years, the mystery of Atlantis has captivated the imagination of many. Archaeologists and historians have dedicated vast amounts of time and resources to uncover any tangible evidence that the island ever existed. They have scoured the earth, diving deep into the ocean in hopes of finding remnants of this supposedly advanced civilization. Despite their efforts and the discovery of various underwater ruins across different oceans and seas, none have been conclusively identified as being part of Atlantis. These findings often lead to more questions than answers, fueling further speculation and investigation. A lot of evidence for um, loom weights, thousands of loom weights, way more than you would need for domestic production. So it seems that like maybe textiles were something that were being produced on the site and perhaps exported. Are the Beale ciphers a master key to untold riches or merely a wild goose chase through history's dense fog? Share your theories and thoughts and remember to like and subscribe for more.